And um, clearly, given what's uh, happening with the government at the moment, suggestions we may still get uh, spending cuts in various departments. People will be very anxious in these weeks ahead. Completely. I think the prospect of further cuts will, you know, will we'll just give key workers in the NHS kind of e even less hope that this government has a plan. You know, as you say, by the end of this month, about 400,000 key workers across the NHS will be deciding if they're prepared to take strike action to, you know, to, to strike for better pay and staffing um, and take that action later this winter. These are really difficult decisions for health workers to make. They do not take them lightly. It shows the severity of the situation that we're in. And at the moment, the government just does not seem to have a plan to deal with the NHS staffing crisis. What pay offers have you been offered? Have your members been offered? So the decision that health workers are going to be taking when our ballot launches on the 27th of October is in relation to the £1,400 um, that was awarded in July. So that was late. So health workers were due a rise on the 1st of April. They had to wait months to find out that they were going to get a pay rise that was well below the rate of inflation. Now, we'd been advising um, government that nurses, paramedics, porters, cleaners were saying that they could not cope Hope with rising bills this winter. We know that situation is only getting worse, more and more people finding it difficult to cope with the cost of living. And we know that pay is meaning that every day people are leaving jobs they love in the NHS to go to, to less stressful and better paid work elsewhere. And that means that there's more work left for the people who are the people who stay. We've been advising government since the turn of the year that an inflation proof pay rise would be a way of retaining staff, of preventing more people leaving the NHS this winter, of helping reverse the trend in the workforce crisis and starting to, to see us retain people, to stop more people leaving before those queues get bigger. We've got 7 million of us waiting for treatment. That's not the key to a, an economy that's in recovery. You know, to get, to get the country working again, it's absolutely critical that we invest in the NHS. And that means stopping more people leaving before the situation gets any worse this winter. But c can I put it to you, Sarah, that, that given the nature of the work and given those people who sacrifice so much working for the NHS... It's unlikely, is it, that they're really going to walk out on the job and take an industrial action? And, you know, will the, the government gamble with that? Well, that's in the that's in the government's um, in the government's hands. What what health workers, what key workers are telling us is that they can no longer cope not only with the pay that doesn't help them meet their bills, but they can't cope with going home after every shift, knowing that they've not been able to give care to the standards that they want because they don't have enough colleagues, and we know that pay is a factor. So the government has to get serious with this. What we want to see as unions that speak for health workers, for nurses, for, for cleaners, for paramedics, what we would like to see is the government working with us to avert the strikes before they happen. We will have a few weeks during the, the period that the ballot is open. We want to see government taking us seriously to talk to us and sit down with us and resolve this, to give health workers and all key workers across the NHS some hope that they are valued and that they are going to be encouraged to stay in the NHS this winter.